Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I was actually sitting down, and yes, I'll admit it, I was sitting down with my wife watching an episode of The Bachelor. And when they went to a commercial break, I saw a cool bumper that I thought would make for a great tutorial working inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And it's this bumper that you see right in front of you. It's the one that you see when it goes out to commercial break. Now, it could say, obviously, The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. And it may look like something that's, you know, complicated. You might have to do it inside of a compositing application, but it's really not. It's something that you can do right from within your Media Composer and Symphony timeline. Short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony, and let me show you how we're going to do this. Okay, so let's Alt-Tab into Symphony, obviously Command-Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And the first thing I'm going to do is just open my sequences bin here, and let's create our title first. What we're going to do is navigate up to Clip. We're going to come down to New Title. Of course, we're going to be prompted as to which title tool we want to open, and we want the Marquee Title Tool. And what we're going to do first of all is just rejig our windows here and our buttons. There we go. Very nice. And I'm going to turn on my safe title, safe action. And I'm going to type in, appropriately enough, The Bachelor. There we go. And let's just stretch our bounding box to fill the entire screen here. Very nice. And I'm just going to increase the size. Let's actually make sure I'm increasing the size. There we go. And this is not the exact font for The Bachelor, but you kind of get the idea here just because I didn't actually go to what the font and look it up. So let's set the upper uh, value of, the, of this font, the size of this font, to be, I don't know, somewhere around 90, I think. That's looking pretty good. And what I'm also going to do now is just adjust the letting in between everything here. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to hold Alt on Windows Option on the Mac. Just use the up arrow to adjust that letting. Very nice. And now what I'm going to do is just center everything up. There we go. So that's kind of what the text treatment looks like in The Bachelor. Now what I need to do is to just animate it. So let's do that. What we're going to do is you'll see right now I'm in basic animation mode. Now if you don't happen to be in basic animation mode, no problem. You can simply come to your tool sets, come down to basic animation mode right here, or the shortcut on your keyboard is F and 4, F4. So what we want to do now is we want to do a simple animation. Now I know that this is actually a kerning uh, animation. So I'm going to turn animation mode on. Now before I do that, actually, I'm going to come up to file. Let's set our duration to be about, I don't know, 12 seconds, I think. I think in total the whole shot's going to be about 10, but we'll just go 12 just for just for the sake of having a little bit of pad on the end there. Okay. So I'm going to turn basic animation mode on, and let's just adjust the kerning here to squish everything right down. Now we need to get it, I think, right about there is good, because the here on the top, we don't want it stretching out past where what would be the center point is. And I think that's probably about it right there. Okay. So now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to come down about a second and a half. So probably to about there. Now at this point, everything is going to be back to what we'll call quote unquote normal. Once we're at normal, what we're going to do is come all the way down to the end here. And let's set the end value to be a value of about 2, I think. Now, right now, it stretches outside of title save. But that's OK. Don't worry about that. We'll get to it in just a second. I'm going to turn basic animation mode off. And you're going to see what happens if I come right back to the beginning. I'm going to hit play here. As everything extends out, it sort of comes to a screeching halt and then goes very slowly out. Now what I want to do is I want to get in and adjust that sort of hard stop where it sort of goes from really quick speed to really slow speed sort of in a snap of your finger. And how we do that is very easy. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to navigate over to the left in the timeline window. I'm going to drop text down and I'm simply going to select kerning. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the keyframe values for kerning. There they go. We have a keyframe at the beginning, a keyframe there about the second and a half mark, and a keyframe there at the end. Now what I want to do is use a keyframe interpolation, which is kind of the same as an After Effects. What I'm going to do is select the keyframe I want to adjust. I'm going to right click. And what I want to do is I want to come up and I'm going to say, let's smooth that keyframe out. And I'm going to use the whole curve to do it. Now you'll see as soon as I do that, these two other dots have appeared. And what that actually is doing is it's smoothing out that move. Now because it's such a gradual move, it looks like it comes to a very hard stop. And what we can even do here is I think what I'll do is come down to the end. Let me just come all the way down to the end here. I think I'm going to turn basic animation mode on. Maybe we'll set this to be about, let's try 5. I think that might be too much. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. Let's try 4.5. So that way what's going to happen is I'll turn animation mode off here. It's going to be less of a hard move. There we go. So if I play this now, 
That's looking a little bit better. Very nice over the 10 seconds. Okay. So I'm happy with the way that this looks. Now, the one last thing that I want to do before I get out of the marquee title tool is I want to add a drop shadow to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply with the text selected, I'm going to come over to drop shadow. We'll just set the opacity to be 100. I'm going to leave it on its one by minus one preset. And let's just set the softness to be about, I don't know, let's say at about 10. I think that's probably about good. Now, I don't have a background in there, but if I needed to, I could come back in and adjust this after the fact, but I'm probably pretty sure that it's going to be okay. Probably pretty sure. That really doesn't sound too sure, but I'm fairly certain that I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save everything to a bin, and we'll just give the title tool here a second just to render everything. Now, remember, this is an HD animation. It's 10 seconds long, 720p, 23976. This is rendering out pretty quick. You know, considering we've got that smooth on it and everything. So we're going to give this a second just to finish what it's doing. Once it's done, remember, we're going to go back to MIDI Composer Symphony. And we're going to do three passes of the export for this title. And once that's done, we're going to drop it into our timeline. And we're going to do our background. Now, our background is going to be sort of a throwback to a tutorial I did a few lessons ago on color correction. I'm going to use the same clip because that's, you know, you see that, you know, the show The Bachelor, they're in all these, you know, exotic locations and things like that. And, you know, as far as the time lapse footage goes, that's about as exotic as I have. So we're going to use that clip. And all we're going to do is color correct it in the exact same way that I color corrected it before. Because remember, like I said, every shot requires color correction whether you think it does or not. Okay, so now we're going through our passes now. And this is going to be done momentarily. Okay, and now that our export is done, you'll see that we now have our bachelor word mark inside of our preview window. So what I'm going to do is hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm actually going to come back to the beginning here because I only want 10 seconds of this shot here. There we go. I'm going to hit, uh, we're actually going to create a new sequence. I was going to hit B on the keyboard to just drop it into a new sequence. But I'm actually going to create a new sequence because I want this to go on video layer 2. So there we go, perfect, it's on video layer two. Now I don't need this audio, so let's just delete it. And what we need to do is to get our background footage. So what we're gonna do is come into time-lapse, and I already have that clip marked right here. There we go, perfect. And again, we're just going to come back. I'm just going to turn video layer one on. So we have auto patching on, which is going to send our uh, clip in the preview window right down to that layer. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select that entire duration. Hit B. Now you'll remember from our color correction lesson, if we want to get in and color correct this quickly, we're just going to come up to our color correction workspace. Or you'll remember I mentioned that you might want to map that shortcut to your keyboard because it's a handy shortcut to have. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to adjust the gamma, the gain, and the setup. Now, I think what we're going to be adjusting here is just the gain and the gamma. I'm just going to grab the gamma. We're just going to drag it right down like such. I'm just going to bring the gain up a little bit, not too much. Because you'll remember, we want to make sure that we stay within our safe levels over here, which we do. I'm just going to come back now. I'm going to switch back to my source record editing, just like such. And you'll see now that we're almost there. I'm just going to hit play here. And there it is. But I do need one more element. And it's an element I'm going to use from Boris Continuum Complete. Now you're probably thinking, well, why would you use something from Boris Continuum Complete? Because you'll remember when you made your Symphony purchase of version 6, you get Boris Continuum Complete included with it. That's why I wanted to show that one, because all my Symphony friends out there, you already have access to it, whether you knew you did or not. Okay, so what we're going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to come down to the Lights section of Boris Continuum Complete 8, and we're going to grab Lens Flare 3D right here. I'm just going to drag it right down here, and I'm going to drop it onto my clip. What we're going to do now is just make sure that we're on Video Layer 2. Now, I held Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac. When I drop that onto the clip, what we're going to do is just press Shift and Y to go into Effects Mode. And what we want to make sure of is that this Lens Flare appears after everything sort of comes to a stop, which is right about here, I think. There we go. So we're going to stretch all the way out. That's pretty good right about there. And what we're going to do is we're going to have it come along the E of Bachelor. Now what we want to do here is I'm just going to come back to the effects editor here for a second. I'm just going to choose a preset. And I'm going to choose the 105 prime chroma hoop just like that. What I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to come down and I'm going to switch over to the multi-filter end. 
just so that the effect looks the way that it should. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over, I'm going to grab the position, and we're going to start it right about here. Now this flares a little bit. Actually, you know what? Right there it doesn't look that bad because once you're over here, there's too much of a hoop. But since we're going to have this just going along the E, I think this is actually going to work good just like that. So what we're going to do at this point right here is I'm going to come down to the position X, Y. I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a keyframe. What we're going to do is come all the way down to the end. And at the end, what we want to do is we want to just come back to the effects editor. I'm just going to drag all the way back to the end. I'm going to right click again. We're going to add a keyframe, but we're just going to move this lens flare along the E just a little bit here. There we go, just to the edge. And we had it, there we go, right like that. Perfect. Okay, what we also want to do, as you'll see, there it is there, looking very nice. We also want this to just fade up, probably over a span of about 12 frames. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm actually just going to come back over here. I'm just going to select that keyframe, and I'm going to hit plus 12 on the keyboard. We're going to come back to the effect editor. What the parameters that we want to adjust is the global intensity. So I'm just going to right click. I'm going to say add a keyframe. We're just going to come right back here to where we had our keyframe before. It's probably easier if I do it over here. And again, I'm going to come back up here, right click and say add keyframe. But at this first keyframe, we want the global intensity to be zero. So the flare is going to disappear altogether. And it's only going to appear very subtly right there and move across that letter E. And guess what? I think we're pretty much done. What I'm going to do is just render this out quickly here. And you can imagine how this will look going to a commercial break. We'll have, you know, sort of the talking, the drama, you know, they always show that sort of, you know, crazy montage of what's coming up to, you know, build drama. And then what happens is that we'll go right into our, the bachelor word mark, just like such with our little lens flare and our text stretching out across the screen, all created right from within the comfort of our symphony timeline. Now, I think one last thing I'm going to do just to add the final icing on this cake is I'm just going to add in a transition in here. And again, I'm just going to use BCC8's Film Glow. We're just going to drag it and drop it onto the topmost layer. You'll see everything glows out. And all I'm going to do is basically step into the effect we're going to add a keyframe for intensity right down here. We're just going to have this intensity sort of dissipate over about about a second, I think. Again, right click, add keyframe. We'll just set the intensity down to be nothing. And you'll see that literally in a couple clicks, I not only have that cool animation, but I also have a transition to go with it. So you see, getting in and mimicking these elements that we see in these broadcast shows is very quick and very easy with a little bit of forward thinking and the power of Avid Symphony. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.